Hey everyone, let me set the stage. On July 1st, the Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile spots an object moving through our solar system. Not totally unusual. See, we find asteroids and comets all the time. But within days, astronomers realized something. They were like, yo, this thing isn't from around here. See, it's the third confirmed interstellar object we've ever detected. And it's been given the designation 3I Atlas. 3, because it's the third object. I stands for interstellar and Atlas for the observatory that found it, which is like totally cool. I can't imagine if like I had found it and it'd be named after Mancini. That would be awesome. But anyway, um, you might be thinking, okay, Steve. It's a space rock from another star system. That's cool. But why do I care? There are way crazier things happening in our world right now, um, you know, which are way more important than this space rock that you're telling me isn't going to smack into us. But here's the reality. Here's why it's important. This thing is breaking every rule we ever thought we understood about interstellar objects. And folks, if that's not in itself interesting and raising your eyebrow, then maybe the people who were throwing up red flags saying that, hey, this is really weird. Could this be alien tech? So welcome back to Thriving in Ambiguity, where we break down the complexities of technology, ideally without losing our minds. I'm Steve Mancini, and today we're talking about something that has absolutely nothing to do with AI, observability, or the cloud, or does it? Today, we're talking about 3i Atlas, an interstellar visitor that's currently racing through our solar system. And folks, the more we look at this thing, the weirder it gets. Because what we're really talking about today is what happens when your data shows something impossible, when the numbers don't add up, when every model that you're looking at says one thing, but you're actually observing something completely different. Let's start with speed. Atlas is moving at 58 kilometers per second. That's about 130,000 miles per hour relative to our sun. To put that into perspective, the first interstellar object we found, Amora Amora, back in 2017, was traveling at about 26 kilometers per second. Still pretty fast, right? The second one, the comet Borisov um, from 2019, that clocked in at 32 kilometers per second. But Atlas is moving nearly twice as fast as either of those objects. It's the fastest interstellar object that's ever been recorded. But here's what really caught my attention. It's not just fast. Its trajectory is aligned almost perfectly with the plane of our solar system. Now, the odds of that happening randomly are about 1 in 500. And if you were an alien intelligence wanting to survey our solar system, you'd approach along the planetary plane where all the interesting stuff is happening. Random space rocks? Yeah. They don't typically do that. They don't align so perfectly until now. So, okay. So speed and trajectory, they're both really interesting. But maybe it's just coincidence, right? Well, let's talk about the size. See, recent analysis suggests that Atlas has a mass of over 33 billion tons with the diameter somewhere between three and five million miles. Yeah. With a diameter somewhere between three and five miles across. That makes it three to five orders of magnitude more massive than the previous two interstellar objects we've detected. Here's where the math starts screaming at us. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, he set the internet on fire when he said, that we should consider the possibility that some of these objects might not be natural. Loeb pointed out something critical. He says, 
based on what we know about how objects form in space, small objects should be exponentially more common than the larger ones. We should have detected um, on the order of 100,000 Amore More sized objects before finding something as massive as 3i Atlas. But we've only detected two previous inter interstellar objects, just two. Now, the statistics don't work. And in my world, whether we're talking about IT infrastructure or space objects, when the statistics don't work, you pay attention. Now, let's talk about what really got me down this rabbit hole, the outgassing. When comets approach the sun, they heat up. Ice turns directly into gas. This creates the characteristic tail and the cloud of gas and dust around the comet called the coma. Um, I think most of you should have probably learned about that in science class, at least I remember. Um, here's the thing. That outgassing acts like a thruster. It's basic physics that we learned from Einstein. You're ejecting mass in one direction, so you get pushed in the other direction. For every comet that we've ever observed, this outgassing causes measurable changes um, in the trajectory. Now with Atlas, it's clearly outgassing and frankly, way earlier than scientists predicted. The James Webb Space Telescope measured it ejecting 129 kilograms of carbon dioxide per second, plus water vapor and carbon monoxide. So that's substantial, but here's the problem. Despite months of observation from May through September, astronomers detected zero, and I mean zero measurable change in its trajectory due to this outgassing. For a 33 billion ton object, you'd still expect some deviation. It may not be huge, but you should detect something with all of our modern instrumentation. Yet the object is following a trajectory consistent with gravity alone, as if the outgassing wasn't affecting it at all. And in reality, that should not be possible. So either this thing is far more massive than we think, um, which would make it absurdly large for a comet or something else is going on entirely. So we've got speed anomalies, size anomalies, trajectory anomalies, and physics anomalies. Surely the chemistry is right. <laughs> nope, that's not right either. A spectroscopic analysis detected atomic nickel vapor in the coma. Is that unusual? No. We've seen nickel in other comets, but here's what is unusual. They detected nickel without detecting iron. See, in nature, nickel and iron form together. They should appear in roughly equal amounts. When you outgas a comet, you should see both. The only place we know that produces nickel without iron is in industrial manufacturing, specifically through artificial chemical processes used to refine nickel alloys. So this is the red flag. Now I'm not saying it's alien, but I am saying the chemistry signature doesn't match what we expect from a natural formation. And the suspicion is, what if this is a sign and we're ignoring it? Because when you start stacking all of these anomalies, speed, trajectory, size, outgassing, the physics, and now chemistry, at some point, you have to ask yourself, how many coincidences before it's not a coincidence? And here's where the timing gets really interesting. See, 3i Atlas will make its closest approach to the sun on October 30th, just outside the orbit of Mars. That's also when it passes closest to Mars itself. And here's the kicker. From late September through November, we can't observe it from Earth anymore. It'll be behind the sun from our perspective, a period called solar conjunction. So during its closest approach, during peak solar heating, when outgassing should be at its maximum, we lose visibility. We won't see it again until December. Now NASA could potentially observe it with their high rise camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter during its close pass by Mars in late October. 
Avi Loeb specifically urged them to do this, whether they will, whether they'll actually share the data publicly, whether they'll share it promptly, that's an open question. I guess we'll see. If it was alien and you wanted to do something near Mars while Earth couldn't observe you, well, late October 2025 would be the perfect window. I'm just saying, Avi Loeb may have a point here, and I don't know if we want to ignore it. Um, all right, so... Let me get back into my world for a second, because there is a reason I'm talking about this on a podcast where I typically talk technology and leadership. In observability, whether we're talking about Dynatraces monitoring your applications or astronomers tracking objects in space, you can't manage what you can't observe. When your monitoring shows anomalous behavior, you have a decision tree. Is it a false positive? Is it instrumentation errors? Um, is it something within normal parameters we just haven't seen it before? Or is it something genuinely outside the model? A zero-day exploit, for instance, or a novel attack vector, something that um, requires immediate escalation. And the challenge is, how many anomalies do you need before you escalate? 3i Atlas has at least six independent anomalies, speed twice that of the previous interstellar objects, trajectory alignment with a one in 500 odds, size distribution that violates statistical expectations, outgassing without trajectory deviation, chemical signatures matching industrial processes, and now, Perfectly timed to enter an observation blackout during what we expect peak activity. In cybersecurity, if you saw a network intrusion with six different anomaly signatures, you wouldn't wait around to see if it resolves itself. You'd investigate immediately. So here's what we're watching for in December. When Atlas III reemerges, a few things could happen. Best case scenario, it's exactly where we predicted. It continues acting like a weird but natural comet, and science learns something about new interstellar objects. Let's say it gets a little interesting. The trajectory is slightly off. More observations reveal an exotic but natural explanation. And our textbooks get updated, and we learn something about interstellar objects. But then there's the problem case. The trajectory significantly changes, or outgassing stops completely, or it doesn't reemerge where it's predicted, or that Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter data um, from October, yeah, that, that's somehow classified or delayed. Now, if any of those things happen, the hair on the back of your neck should probably stand up. Look. I'm not saying this is alien technology. I'm not saying we're going to be under attack. But the scientific consensus is that it's just a comet. Just a really unusual one. But here's my question. When you have multiple independent anomalies, when the math is telling you something doesn't fit, at what point do you acknowledge uncertainty instead of defaulting to the comfortable explanation? The scientific establishment is saying, yep, it's definitely a comet, and I have high confidence of that. But the statistics are saying, yeah, this doesn't fit any known pattern with equal confidence. <laughs> so the reality is both can't be fully right. Something else has to be going on. And maybe that's okay. Maybe acknowledging, hey, we don't know what this is yet, is more of an honest answer than a premature certainty um, because the alternative dismissing anomalies because they don't fit our existing models that's how you miss the important stuff so why am i telling you all of this because thriving in ambiguity means being comfortable with uncertainty while still asking the hard questions if it means trusting the data even when the narrative says otherwise it means recognizing patterns 
that don't fit and being willing to say, yo, something's not adding up here. Whether we're talking about interstellar comets, AI governance, digital transformation, or observability, the skills are the same. Notice the anomalies, trust the math, question the narrative, and prepare for surprises. Atlas might turn out to be just a weird comet. That's the most likely explanation. But the questions we're asking about statistical anomalies, observation gaps, accountability, and how we respond to data that doesn't match our models, those questions matter regardless of whatever this object turns out to be. So keep watching the sky, keep asking yourself uncomfortable questions. And when December rolls around, if this thing reemerges, pay attention. Um, Cause if it's not where it's predicted, um, if it's not where it's supposed to be, and if it's doing weird things, then we're probably gonna have some pretty interesting conversations on the other side of this. So this has been Thriving in Ambiguity. I'm Steve Mancini. If this episode got you thinking, share it with someone who needs uh, to hear about it. And if you have thoughts on 3i Atlas, the limits of observation, or what happens when the math doesn't match the model, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and whatever you do, don't stop asking questions.